Your speech today to UNHCR's executive committee comes at a time of record high global force displacement, 51.2 million people. Is the international system set up after World War II originally to deal with refugees coping? The system as such to protect refugees is more important than ever before precisely because it responds to the needs of refugees to find safety, to get on with their lives and to deal with, with the displacement problem that they are facing. The system was never meant to address the root causes of displacement. For that you have a very different system in place which goes beyond the humanitarian realm and moves into the political one. And that requires a lot more fixing than, than what the International Protection System for Refugees can do. What do you see as the challenges of today? I think we see, for example, that most first countries of asylum provide asylum, open their borders and continue to show incredible generosity and solidarity with refugees who come into their territories. That's one very positive thing. We have also seen in a number of very heated political debates a number of political figures who have stood up for the rights of refugees. At the same time, and that's more on the negative score, we have seen some egregious cases of refoulement. We have seen a rise in, in abductions. We have seen states entering into bilateral arrangements for the transfer of asylum seekers, often shifting the burden as a result and at variance with international standards. Prevention, you mentioned earlier, it's a key theme in your speech this year. Uh, to what extent, though, does this focus on protection strategies for such major crises as Syria uh, or Iraq uh, need support? We have, of course, the curative system in place, which is international protection, but we actually need a new focus on prevention. There was a lot of talk in the 90s about prevention. We haven't seen the same focus given on prevention today, despite the fact that the displacement challenges are much bigger. Obviously the prevention of causes leading to displacement needs to be much higher on national, regional and international agendas. But isn't the reality that many of the real problems are political ones? Can human rights be the answer in this context? There are at the same time also areas where we can work collectively to address them. And one of the success stories, if you like, is the whole momentum that we have gained around statelessness. We have seen over the last decade four million people being granted nationality. We have seen 42 accessions over the last couple of years, which is not what we saw in the first decades after these conventions were adopted. On statelessness, UNHCR is setting itself a goal of trying to end statelessness in 10 years' time. You've spoken of this progress, but is that possibly overambitious to look within a decade of bringing this to an end? Well, it's first of all good to have ambitious goals and to have aspirations that inspire people. I am on balance confident that we will see a further reduction in statelessness populations over the 10 years. Whether we will achieve our target, it's too early to say. But I think we have to go into this campaign, into the strategy to end statelessness, with the conviction that we are able to do that. This week is the first anniversary of the disasters off of Lampedusa last year, in which 600 people lost their lives at sea. What has changed in the year since then? Italy, for example, has built up a whole search and rescue regime, which they call Mare Nostrum, which has saved thousands and thousands and thousands of lives. I think that's one very concrete, very positive example coming out of that terrible experience. The other one is that the EU has, for instance, developed common strategies to look at their own systems, but also to look at the way where migratory flows occur. Um, at the same time, in a number of other continents, we have unfortunately also seen a bit of a 19th century thinking of law enforcement, border control and deterrence. So what do you see as being the protection challenges of the coming year? 
we need to build, strengthen, and do everything we can on building a s robust asylum system. We have launched a beyond detention strategy where we want to end the detention of refugee children and asylum-seeking children. We want to promote alternatives to detention. I think we really need to have a hard look at local solutions again. For example, Tanzania just announced the uh, granting of nationality to about 200,000 former Burundian refugees. This is extremely welcome. We need more of this. We, need, we have seen that Pakistan has just extended the uh, permits that they issue for three years to the Afghan refugees. All of these are very positive examples. But we need to go beyond this. We need to look at labor mobility schemes, for example. And we, l we have to look at employment possibilities and development issues that show that refugees can also contribute to their societies.